Imagine a country so small you could drive across it in a few hours. Now, imagine that same country creating technology so powerful that giants like the United States and Europe are scrambling to catch up. This isn't a movie plot. This is real. This is Israel. How does a nation of just 9 million people with few natural resources and constant security threats become a global technology superpower? The answer is more surprising than you might think. It's a story not of luck, but of a unique system built from the ground up. A system where necessity doesn't just breed invention, it forges it in fire. Welcome to Winds of Thought. Today, we're uncovering the real, untold story of Israel's tech miracle. Forget the dry headlines. We're going deep into the culture, the people, and the mindset that made this possible. This is about how a tiny nation rewrote the rules of innovation. The proof is in the pudding. Let's start with what everyone can see, the results. Over the last two decades, Israel didn't just join the tech race, it started winning in specific, crucial areas. Think of it like this. While other countries were building bigger ships, Israel was perfecting the engine. Look at cybersecurity. When you use an app on your phone or when a big bank protects your money online, there's a high chance an Israeli company is involved in keeping that data safe. Israel is now the second largest source of cybersecurity innovation in the world, right after the United States. That's staggering for a country its size. Then there's agriculture. In a world facing food shortages, Israeli drip irrigation technology is helping farmers from Africa to California grow more food with less water. They turned a desert into a breadbasket, and now they're exporting that knowledge to the world. And in medicine, Israeli startups are creating cameras you can swallow as a pill for internal exams and developing new ways to detect diseases like cancer earlier than ever before. These aren't just lab experiments. They are real products saving real lives right now. The numbers tell a clear story. Israel has one of the highest numbers of startups per person in the world. Giant companies like Apple, Google, and Microsoft didn't just set up small offices there, they built massive research and development centers. They did this for one simple reason. The talent and the ideas in Israel are too good to ignore. The world isn't just watching Israel, it's investing in it, heavily. The secret sauce. It's in the soil. So what's the secret? The secret isn't one single thing. It's a combination of ingredients that, when mixed together, create an environment where innovation thrives naturally. It's like special soil where only the strongest ideas can grow. The first ingredient is the army. In Israel, military service is mandatory for most young people at 18. But this isn't just any army. Within the Israeli Defense Forces, or IDF, there are elite technology units. These units are like real-world versions of a Silicon Valley startup, but with much higher stakes. The brightest 18-year-olds are thrown into these units and given a mission, solve an impossible problem. They might be told to crack a complex code, build a new drone, or create a cyber defense system, and they have to do it fast. There's no room for failure. These teenagers learn to lead, to manage huge budgets, and to make decisions that have real consequences. By the time they leave the army at 21 or 22, they aren't just kids. They are seasoned project managers, engineers, and problem solvers. They have a network of friends and colleagues who are also tech experts. This network becomes the foundation for their future businesses. The second ingredient is a culture that sees failure as a lesson, not a loss. In many places, if your startup fails, it's a black mark on your record. In Israel, it's a badge of experience. When an Israeli entrepreneur looks for investors, they are often asked, what did you learn from your last venture that didn't work? Failure is seen as a necessary step on the path to success. This removes the fear of trying, which is one of the biggest blockers to innovation everywhere else. The third ingredient is a complete lack of hierarchy. Israeli culture is famously direct. It's called dugri, which means speaking your mind plainly. A young intern in an Israeli tech company wouldn't think twice about correcting the CEO if they had a better idea. 
This flat structure means the best idea wins no matter who it comes from. It allows information and creativity to flow freely without getting stuck in layers of management and approval. In a fast-moving tech world, this speed is a massive advantage. Turning problems into products. What makes Israeli tech special isn't just that it's advanced, it's that it's useful. There's a relentless focus on solving real, immediate problems. This is the startup nation mindset. Because Israel is a small country with big challenges, it acts as a perfect living laboratory. A new technology can be tested on a national scale quickly. If a cybersecurity firm develops a new tool, it can be tested against real, daily cyber attacks targeting the country. If an ag tech company creates a new irrigation system, it can be tested in the harsh conditions of the Negev desert. This real-world testing is priceless. It means that by the time an Israeli tech product reaches the global market, it's already been through the ringer. It's battle-tested. Customers know it works because it had to work. This is why Israeli tech companies are often so successful. They don't build solutions looking for a problem. They find a painful, urgent problem and build a sharp, focused solution for it. They're masters of what's called vertical innovation, digging deep into one specific area instead of trying to do everything at once. For example, instead of building a general social media platform, an Israeli company might build a specialized algorithm that helps doctors share medical scans more securely. This focus makes their products incredibly powerful in their specific field. The world takes notice. The global impact of this is huge. The United States, a longtime tech leader, now looks to Israel for partnership and inspiration in areas like cybersecurity and intelligence. The relationship is so close that it's become a key part of both countries' national security. American tech companies, as we mentioned, have essentially outsourced some of their most important research and development to Israel because the environment produces results faster than they can back home. In Europe, countries like France and Germany, with their long histories of engineering excellence, are both shocked and impressed. They see Israel's speed and agility and are now trying to copy parts of its model. They are forming more partnerships with Israeli companies and asking themselves, how can we become more like this? This isn't about Israel replacing the United States or Europe. That's not the point. The US still leads in scale and in building massive global platforms. The point is that Israel has shown the world that you don't need to be big to be powerful in the 21st century. You need to be fast, agile, and focused. You need to be able to adapt. But underneath all these systems and strategies, there's something deeper, something in the Israeli spirit. When your back is against the wall, you have no choice but to be creative. Israel's history is one of overcoming impossible odds. This has created a national mindset that doesn't see obstacles as stop signs, but as challenges to be solved. There's a famous Hebrew word, davka. It means doing something precisely because you were told you couldn't. It's a spirit of defiant determination. This davka spirit fuels the tech scene. It's the voice that says, you say it can't be done? Davka, we will do it. This mindset is taught from a young age. Children are encouraged to question everything. In school, the focus is less on memorizing facts and more on critical thinking and debate. This creates adults who are natural innovators, who don't accept the status quo. What this means for you. So, what can we learn from the story of Israel? Whether you're a student, an entrepreneur, or just someone thinking about the future, the lessons are universal. First, Embrace your constraints. You don't need a massive budget or a huge team to do great things. Often, having limited resources forces you to be more creative. Israel's lack of water led to world-leading water technology. Your limitations might be your greatest advantage. Second, build a strong network. The value of the connections made in those army units can't be overstated. Surround yourself with smart, driven people who you trust. Your network is your net worth, especially in the world of innovation. Third, don't fear failure. See it as a stepping stone. Every failed attempt teaches you what doesn't work, bringing you closer to what does. The goal isn't to avoid falling down, it's to learn how to get back up faster and smarter. Finally, focus on solving real problems. The most successful innovations aren't the most complex ones. They're the ones that meet a real human need. Ask yourself, what problem can I solve? Who can I help? If you can find a good answer to that, you're on the right path. The future is agile. 
The story of Israel's tech rise is a powerful reminder that the future doesn't belong only to the biggest or the richest. It belongs to the fastest, the most adaptable, and the most resilient. It belongs to those who can look at a challenge and see an opportunity. In a world that is changing faster than ever, the ability to innovate is no longer a luxury, it's a necessity. Israel's journey shows that with the right mindset and the right environment, anyone, any community, or any nation can punch far above its weight and make a dent in the universe. It teaches us that sometimes the mightiest force for change isn't a giant, but a determined David with a smart sling. If this look into the power of focus innovation sparked new thoughts for you, please hit the like button. It really helps us out. And for more explorations into the ideas that are shaping our future, make sure to subscribe to Winds of Thought. Thanks for watching.